Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Mr. Wiz here. We are still working in MakeCode Arcade. If you are new to my channel, we build video games. So I've already finished a series on how to build games in MakeCode Arcade. A lot of useful stuff there. If you haven't seen it, I would definitely recommend you check it out. And now we are working our way through extensions. There are a lot of extensions to go through. We're going through the recommended extensions first, and then I'm going to show you some of my favorites that are not on the recommended list. Okay, so right now the program that we are looking at is the cherry chaser game which i made back when i was teaching you guys about building chasing games that was the lesson when we learned about overlap codes and all that jazz so this is the game that i made during that lesson where the idea was that the player collects cherries to get points and collects apples to get health and there's all these enemies spawning that i'm trying to avoid every time one touches me i lose a health and so on and so forth so the extension we are looking at today is this one, the status bar extension. I love the status bar extension because it's very easy to use with the skills that you already know. You don't have to learn a bunch of new stuff to use status bar. This is one of my favorite extensions, but it's also one of my students' favorite extensions. They use this a lot in their games. So let's talk about it and sh talk about what we can do with it and how easy it is to use. To download it, you just click on it. And then it will appear in the toolbox as a whole new section that just says status bar. So in here, the first block, the red block, is what you use to create the status bar. And you have the option to give it a width and a height, and then also to give it a kind. That kind is going to come in handy later on because you may end up with more than one status bar in your game. Some games will have a health status bar and maybe an energy status bar. Um, sometimes you might have a magic status bar, or maybe you might have one for the player and one for the enemy, right? Maybe there's player health and enemy health. So you may have different kinds in that regards. We have the value blocks. This is what sets how high you want the value of your status bar to be um, and allows you to change it. And there's also some drop downs. We'll talk about those in a minute. This one is just to grab values from there, which you can use in various different aspects of your code, such as less than and greater than. You may have something where if the status bar value is greater than 20, then do this or something like that, right? Uh, attaching is super important. We'll talk about that. This makes the status bar move with the player, right? So if you want to float above their head, for instance, this is what you would use. All right. And then down here, display can change the way it looks. So you can change the color of the status bar. You can give it a border if you want to. You can give it a text, a label if you want to. Um, you can decide whether it's going to be a smooth transition or not. Uh, so there's lots and lots of stuff here. It looks like a lot of code. But as I mentioned, it's not hard to use once you start playing around with it. And then we have here um, the event blocks, basically. When the status bar equals zero, what should happen? Is the player going to be destroyed? Is something else going to occur? When the status bar uh, is updated, do you want something to happen on the updates? This one is great for comparison. You may want something in the game to change once their health gets less than 50% or less than 25%, or you may want to adjust it in some other way. So a lot that you can do here. Okay, so let's go ahead and start playing around with it. So for my game, the Sherry Chaser game, I want to make it. Right now, the player has three health, which is represented by the three hearts in the top left corner. I want to replace that with a status bar above his head. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and create the status bar first. And it doesn't really matter where I put it on the on start, as long as I'm putting it after the player gets created, right? Because I am going to attach it to the player. So it needs to happen after he gets created. I'm just going to go ahead and put it at the bottom to make it easier for myself. I can rename the status bar if I want to. Since this is the only status bar I'm using in the game, I'm not going to rename it. But if I had several, it would be a good idea to name each one, right? To help you keep track of what's what. So here I can pick the size, the width, and the height. This is in pixels. And also what kind of status bar is it? Health, energy, magic, enemy health, or I can add my own kinds, right? We're just going to leave it as health for what I'm doing. So when I first create it, it's going to appear in the middle of the game right there. You can see the green status bar, but I want it to be above the player's head. So we are going to use the attach block here and attach it to my sprite. My sprite's name is Pack, so I need to make sure I put the right name there. And then with the plus sign, I can choose the padding and the offset. I don't remember what padding does. Offset has to do with how far away it is from the player. We'll talk about that in a second. So let's see, if I leave those both at zero, what happens here? Okay, so they are right, right above his head. 
And when a player moves around, the status bar moves around. All right, pretty cool. Let's see what happens if I change the padding and the offset. If I change the padding, let's change it to 10 or see what happens here. Because I don't remember. Okay, it looks like it moved it higher up. All right, that's cool. And then if I change the offset, which way does it move it there? Oh, it moves it to the right. All right, so it looks like padding is referring to the Y direction and offset is referring to the X direction. That's my impressions. In height, right now the, def the default setting is pretty much a good fit for a normal size character, right? A normal 16, 16 pixel character, that's a pretty good size for him because it fits him well. But again, you can change that. So if you do have a bigger character like a dinosaur, you might want the bar to go farther across to fit the size of the character. You might want to be a little bit thicker. You can adjust all that right there. Okay, moving down, we've got, you know, before we start messing with the value changes, let's look at the display differences here. So green and red is the normal, but we could change it depending on what you're doing. You have all the options for the colors. Maybe you want to make it dark blue and light blue. That would look probably good for magic because magic in games is usually represented by blue. Um, maybe you want it to be something else, right? So you can pick whatever color you feel works best. We're going to keep it as green and red, which is also the default settings. So I actually don't need to have that on. There is a drain color here. This is kind of cool. Let's go ahead and use that. I'm going to use that for now. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So let's go ahead and start using it. Right now, when the enemy touches the player, changes life by negative one. We are going to change that. Instead of changing life by negative one, we're going to change status bar value by, and here's where I would put my negative number. Do I want it to be negative one? In this game, probably not. And I'll talk about that in a second. But I'll just show you what I mean. Negative one is a very, very, very small amount to change a status bar. So watch how many times I have to get hit before you even notice it's happening. See, it took about three hits before we even saw any of it. There we go. It's taking a lot of hits to, de to deal damage to me. The reason that is, is because the status bar's value, when it's full, the, the normal value of the status bar is 100. All right. So when I create the status bar, I can change that value by setting the value to whatever I want it to be. But honestly, I usually recommend leaving it at 100. 100 is a good number for it. If I was to set it something less than 100, like 50, what happens is the status bar is now only half full, right? Now, I noticed there was one there that says max. If I let the max go to 50, does that make it full again? It does. Cool. And it looks like it's not taking as many hits to hit me. So you can change the max and the value, which is kind of nice. For my games, I usually leave it as 100, but it's really up to you how you decide to build your game. So let's change it. For the sake of this game, it was originally 3 health. So let's set the max to 3. And I'm going to get rid of the set life too, because we're not using lives anymore. So as a max of three, and every time I hit, I'm losing one life, which means that each hit is going to take off a big chunk of my status bar. Boom, boom. Yep, and it still took three health to, to get me. All right. So let's make some other adjustments to this now. The drain color, you'll notice you didn't see the pink there. So what we can do is we can go down here to the smooth transition. And there are other options here as well. We can change all sorts of things. I haven't even used all of these, if I'm being honest. But we're going to use Smooth Transition and turn that on. And let me show you what that does. You see that? So it doesn't instantly take away my health. There's like a few seconds where the scrolls down to whatever that value was. So that's pretty cool. Um, What other... Drop down options where they're label it end, constrain value, invert fill direction. Oh, that's cool. So you can change the direction if you want it instead of going 
right to left. You could have it go left to right. No auto destroy on attached destroy. Hmm. Ignore events. Why would you want it to ignore events? Yeah, some of these I'm not sure why you would want to use them, but label at end is kind of cool because you can change the label. So let's talk about that. In the display section, we talked about how you could set the fill and background and the drain color. You can also give a border if you want to, right? So, and you can change the size of the border. So this just makes your health bar a little bit fancier looking. See how I have that gray border now, right? So I normally don't use a border. The only time I would probably recommend having a border is if your status bar is really big. One thing I wanted to mention, I should probably have mentioned this earlier, is you don't have to attach the status bar to anything. You can have the status bar in its own area. Sometimes in some games, especially if it's a boss fight, I will actually have the status bar at the top of the game. So I'll make the status bar really big and take over the entire top of the screen. Um, that way it's going down as you're playing it. So that's a, you don't have to attach it to a character. You can have it anywhere on the screen you want to just by setting its position like you would set a sprite's position. All right. So, yeah, in the case of big status bars, a border can be a nice addition. But if it's a small status bar like what we have, there's really no reason to. Labels are nice, especially if you have more than one status bar, right? If you have a health and a magic, the player should probably know the difference. So when you set up the label, it appears on the left-hand side. And there you can see it, right? So now you know that's his health points, his HP. You can also change the color of it. So that white was a little hard to see with this background. So maybe I'll make it red. And now you can see it a little bit easier on this game, right? Cool, cool, cool. Okay, um, what else should we look at here? We talked about smooth transition. Here's we can change the size again. So you can change the size when you first create it right here. But if you wanted to change it later on, you would do it with this block. Um, setting its position. So this is cool. When we are setting up the position for our status bar, especially if it's attached to a player, we can set it. Right now it's automatically on top of him, but what if we don't want it to be on top of the player? We could set it on the bottom of the player, on the left side, or on the right side. So let me show you what left looks like. Because I do use left sometimes. Now it's on the left side of him, right? If I was to put it on the left side like this, I probably wouldn't have it set in that way. What I would probably do is I would probably change the width and height, give it a width of 4 and a height of 20. Now the status bar is going down, right? So you have options. Okay, um, what else do we want to look at with status bar? Padding and offset is the same as what we already saw. Okay, on so what happens when it hits zero? Well, that's pretty standard. You can decide what you want to happen when it hits zero. Just like when we had this block right here on life zero, game over, I could just put that in here. Since we're not using lives anymore in this game, I could put that there. And also, I should probably change this one. So when he touches the... Uh, the one fruit, and it gives him a life. I should change that so that it now uses the status bar and change value by positive one. And I might be done with this game. Yeah, because other stuff I'm not really worried about. I could use this if I wanted to. So, like, maybe instead of having... Right now I have his color change every time he takes damage. Maybe instead of doing that... I could have it happen when his health gets too low. So you can kind of tell he's dying, right? So if his health gets below 50%, I can set... Oh, it shouldn't say other sprite. I need to say the name of my sprite, which is pack. There we go. And there are options here as well that you can change, right? So let's check this out. He now has a health bar on the left side of the screen. And when I take too much damage, I should turn blue. <laughs> All right. 
Oh, you know what might be nice? Instead of changing value by one, what if I change the max by one? That way I can have more than three. Hmm. Maybe I should do both. I like that change of the game, because I think it was still maxing at three. All right, let's try it. Ah! So apparently I'm bad at my own game here, guys. No! <laughs> All right, but you can see the use of the status bar. I don't really know if there's anything else I want to say about that. Um, I can show you what I was talking about earlier, as far as instead of attaching it to the player, if I decide not to attach it to the player, I might make it much larger. So in this case, um, let's change it to the width of the screen is 160. So let's go 150, which is a little bit less than the width of the screen. And for a height, um, 20 is pretty big. Let's go with 10. All right, let's go a little shorter. 150 is still pretty wide. Let's go with 140. That's not bad. All right, so then I can move its position to the, to the top of the screen, right? So there's lots of different things that you can do with the status bar is my point. We'll put it right around here so. Oh, it didn't, didn't move. Hmm, it didn't move. Maybe I can't do that with position. Maybe I have to use the offset blocks. Well, I'm learning something in this video, guys. Let's try it with offset instead. So we said that padding is the one that moved it up, right? So if we move it up, it's 120 tall. So let's move it up 50. Nope, that moved it to the right. I thought padding moved it up. Did I get those backwards? Oh, that moved it down. But you get the idea. All right, I'll stop it there. So you can kind of use the padding and offset to move it in different parts of the game so that as you're playing, instead of having it above the player, you could have it anywhere on the screen. Usually with my games, if it's the player's health, I keep it above the player. But if it's the enemy's health and they're a boss and maybe they have a lot of health, maybe they do have 100 HP and you're slowly knocking it out, putting it at the top of the screen can be a really cool effect, um, a really good visual so that the player can keep track of their health as they're going down. All right. I think I've shown you guys enough about the status bar for you to go build your own games with it. So like I said, this is one of my students' favorite extensions. It's easy to use because you use it the same way you use score and life and the things that you're already used to that are in the info section. You can replace any of that with status bars and just put it where you want to in the game, change the way it looks, and have fun with it. So if you build something that uses status bars, please share it with me by clicking on the share button right here, copying the link and posting it in the comments. If you learned something new today, please click that like button. And if you have not already told your friends and family about this channel, please let them know. Make sure you all subscribe and follow along for more information on how to build fun video games. All right. I'll see you guys later.